In this chapter, we're working with scale representations. In this lesson, we're going to look at three-dimensional drawings. And we'll start by looking at isometric drawings. Okay, hi everybody. So in this video, we're going to take a look at three-dimensional drawings. Okay. Um, we're going to start with looking at isometric drawings. Now, an isometric drawing is a, is a two-dimensional drawing that represents a three-dimensional object. Now, it's, it tries to give you some idea of uh, the, the depth and the, the... Yeah, I guess the best way to say is the depth of the, uh, the object here. What we're going to do here is it's, it's going to be drawn not from face on, not from the side, not from the top, but from a perspective that's off a little bit of all of those so that you can see multiple multiple sides, multiple faces of the, the object. They're drawn to scale. Lines that are parallel in real life are parallel in the drawing. And lines are drawn at 30 degree angles from the horizontal to show width and height. Okay, and that's just kind of a standard. And so you're going to see us, we're going to use this, this isometric dot paper in just a moment to draw a diagram to hopefully help you get a, a sense of how this works. Okay, and then when making three-dimensional drawings, it's easier to use this kind of paper. Okay, uh, and you'll see why in just a second. Basically, the the angles that we're using, the um, yeah, the angles that we're using to kind of give us the depth uh, are are dealt with us. Okay, uh, that's all kind of handled by the isometric dot paper. But let's take a look at an example. All right. So use isometric dot paper to draw a rectangular prism that measures 8 centimeters by 5 centimeters by, by 6 centimeters. Okay, so this dot paper here is set up so that the distance, okay, the distance here between these guys is, is essentially 1 centimeter. So now I'm just going to pick a spot here. I'm going to pick a spot a little bit low. Actually, I'm going to go up a little bit so you have, you can see more of this. I'm going to pick a spot here. Let's let's say this point right here. Is this is going to be the bottom corner, bottom left-hand corner of my object. Now, it's supposed to be 8 centimeters by 5 centimeters by 6 centimeters. Okay. So here's how I'm going to draw this. This is the, going to be the bottom. Uh, like If I was to think of it like this, if, if it's this object that I'm going to draw here, I'm starting at this corner right here. And so I'm going to go 8 centimeters out this way. Let's say 6 centimeters this way and 5 centimeters up. So, I'm going to go 8 centimeters this way. That means going from here. So, that's, this is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, now I'm just going to connect those dots there. Then I'm going to go 6 centimeters this way. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And we're going to connect those dots. Whoops. Now we're going to go up five, okay? And bear in mind that parallel lines in the isometric in the real uh, object remain parallel in the isometric diagram here. So vertical lines are all going to be parallel. So one, two, three, four, five. That's going to go straight up. And then from here, one, two, three, four, five. Whoops, one, two, three, four, five. Yep. Over here, one, two, three, four, five. Oops. And there we go. Now, the lines representing the, the bottom edge, the bottom edge here, they're going to be parallel to that top edge. So I'm going to draw these again. And it's going to be parallel to the, the line that we just drew. There and there. Now, from here... I got to get the, the top of the box here. So from here, remember, this is going to go out along like, like this. It's going to be parallel to this edge right here. And it's going to be six inches, uh, sorry, six centimeters long. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And if this is all done right, the length of this edge up here should also be eight. So if I count this out here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, it is. And so here we go. If I connect these two dots here, there we go. So this should be 8 centimeters by 5 centimeters 
by six centimeters. So there's my isometric uh, drawing of this rectangular prism. So now this question says, in the following isometric drawing, here we go, the indicated wall is 63 feet long. Okay, so there it is. We're going to find the length of the indicated dimensions. Now, the drawing is made on 0.5 centimeter dot paper. Okay, well, although that is, that is a significant bit of information, it actually isn't all that necessary to help us figure this out here. What we need to do is count. If this is 63 feet, this is going to be and I'm, I'm just going to count the spaces in between here. Now, each one of those is going to be a half centimeter, okay? But that's not really the issue here. The, the, number is, the issue is the number of them. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 21. Okay, so 63 feet, and I've got 21 spaces along here. So 63 feet for 21 spaces. Now, each one of those spaces is going to be a half centimeter, but anyway, that, that's irrelevant here. If I do that division here, that means there's three feet per space. Knowing that, I've converted the rest of this problem into nothing more than a counting problem. So, for example, x here. To go from here to here is x. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Well, that's, that's 10 spaces times three feet per space. Okay, three feet per space. That's going to be 30 feet. Okay, y is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. That's 11 spaces multiplied by three feet per space, 33 feet. Z, okay, Z is awesome. Z is one, two, three. So Z is three spaces at three feet per space. That's just going to be nine feet. And W, okay. Now, okay, W is not entirely drawn in there. So that's a, that's a little bit more complicated. So what I got to do is I got to follow this line through just to get a sense of where it's going here and follow this line down. So this is where W is ending behind this little this little wall here, this little barrier. So W is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, W is 10 spaces. Now we already know what that looks like because X was 10 spaces. So 3 feet per space, 30 feet. And now finally, V, we just go up here as one, two, three, four, five spaces. Five spaces at three feet per space. Whoops. And again, you could have used the fact that the, each space is a, is a half centimeter, but it's not really necessary. This becomes, oops, 15 feet. Okay, and there you go. Those are all the those dimensions that we were looking for. Okay, so now we're going to draw the shape below as an isometric drawing, but we're going to use the scale that uh, a half centimeter is going to be equivalent to one, uh, sorry, to 10 inches here. 10 inches. So here's our diagram. Now here's our isometric paper. Uh, this is going to be a uh, half centimeter, 0 0.5 centimeter isometric dot paper. Okay, now let's start, and I, you, you've seen me do this before here. I'm going to start with this corner right here. Now, if each half centimeter is 10 inches, and each of the little spaces here is a half centimeter from point to point there, okay, so to go from here to here at 100 inches, okay, at 100 inches, if I'm dividing that by 10, Okay, 10 inches, each, each little space there's going to be 10 inches. Well, then I'm going to need 10 of these spaces to cover 100 inches. So I'm just going to start, I'm going to start at a place that I, that I feel confident I am, I'm going to be able to fill this in. I'm going to start right here. Then I'm just going to count this out. I need 10 spots. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So here's where I'm going to end. 
So I'm just going to connect those those two. So right here, this is my 100 inches. The front here is 60 inches. And again, each half inch space is going to count for 10 inches. So I'm going to need six of them. Six to cover six of those 10 inch spaces to cover 60 inches. So from here, I'm going to count that out. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so now I've got those two bottom inches, uh, edges here. This is 60 inches. Uh, the height, the height here is 20 inches. To this little edge right here is 20 inches, 20 inches. That's going to be just two, two spaces there because each one of those spaces is 10 inches. So that's just going to be up to... This one's also going to be up two, and then I'm going to connect these two because that's that's that edge that it gets up to. And this is going to be 20 inches. Now, what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to draw this line in quite yet because this one is off at a weird angle. It's not square to everything else. I'm going to get these points right here in just a little bit, and then I'll connect those dots. I'll, I'll connect the two dots that I've created uh down here. I'll connect these two dots to those points. So anyway, let's go over here. The back end of this thing is 40 inches up. If each space there is 10 inches, I'm just going to have to go uh, four spaces up. So it's going to be one, two, three, four. Okay, so here's my 40 inches. Now, I know that this is going to be 60 inches going this way and then 60 inches going this way. So that's six spaces. So going here, from this point, I'm going to go six spaces over. One, two, three, four, five, six. Connect those. Oops, I went over. Then I'm going to come six inches down to the right here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Or sorry, six spaces here, 60 inches. Okay, so this is 60 inches, this is 60 inches. And because this edge here is parallel to this one, I can draw that same thing here from this edge, so this, this vertex here, one, two, three, four, five, six. We'll connect those. And then we're going to connect these two dots here. And that finishes up that, that opened kind of square shape right there. Now I've got, all I've got left to do is connect these lines here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to connect those two points where I left off. There and there. And so now there you go. There's the isometric drawing for this particular shape right here with all the dimensions. Okay, there you go. Okay, we're going to wrap this up here with just a, a quick discussion about perspective drawings. Okay, and a perspective drawing is a drawing that represents the object as you actually see it. Okay, so in reality, if you're out there looking at an object, the way we see it is slightly different than the representations that we've been looking at thus far. And one of the reasons is that parallel lines seem to run together at some point and disappear at the horizon. Okay. Uh, in the best example that you think about your, your railroad tracks, here's the horizon right here. You've got railroad tracks, and as they go, okay, here we go, dunk, 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 dunk. They seem to converge at the horizon, kind of are, are where they disappear, the disappearing point there, okay? Now, a drawing that uses a parallel projection draws the same line so that they don't disappear, like they're always horizontal. In our diagram, they stay parallel. But that's not necessarily how we, we view things. So here's an isometric view of a shape composed of a bunch of cubes. Now, if you were to look at it from top, the top here, this is what a parallel projection looks like. I mean, you're just seeing all the parallel lines are staying parallel. It's ex exactly the way, um, like the math kind of suggested it would be. All these things are, are, are parallel. These lines are parallel to these lines. The vertical lines are parallel. But a perspective drawing from the top is a little different. Okay, from a pers in a perspective diagram here, all of those parallel lines, particularly the um, 
the ones that aren't necessarily horizontal or, or vertical, they're all going to meet at a specific point. And so that's what you're seeing. We're drawing these things out to a, a specific point somewhere on the horizon, uh, the horizon line. And you see that used a lot in art to give the, an element of realism to, to the diagram. Okay. Oftentimes these are a lot more helpful if you're doing construction, but these, these make things seem a lot more realistic. Anyway, let's walk through how you might draw something uh, to give that kind of perspective. Okay, so we're looking at perspective draw drawings here. So to create a perspective drawing, first of all, we're going to follow steps here. So draw the front face of the object as a two-dimensional figure, and you leave some space above it, okay? Or, or below it, depending on how you, you want to draw this. But in this case, we're going to go above it here. So here's we've got our trapezoid right here. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw the horizon line above and pick a vanishing point, okay? Now, vanishing point, that's that's the point where we want the, the parallel lines to kind of converge to. That's the point that it looks like on the horizon that everything's moving to here. So we're going to pick a vanishing point to the left or to the right of the shape on the horizon line. So there we go. Then what we're going to do is we take we take the, the corners that we can comfortably do this with and we connect them, okay, to that vanishing point. Now, this is not to say that this object extends infinitely back, but this is going to start to create the perspective that we want, okay? Now, finally, or not finally, there's a couple more steps here, we're going to make a smaller 2D copy of the first shape so back here, so what we might have done here is you might have seen this line right here going there. And then what we're going to do here is create a smaller version of that front shape at the back end here. But we're only going to show the lines that would be visible. Okay, so basically these are going to be the, the lines that are going to connect those vanishing lines that were, we drew in before. Then what we do to finish off this perspective uh, drawing here is, is we erase the lines that go to the horizon and, and even we erase the horizon so that all we're left with is this shape here. And you can see that it gives actually a little bit more realistic, a more realistic look to its, its, uh, its perspective here, okay? Its depth. Now these two lines here in the diagram, sorry, in the actual object, these two lines here would be parallel to each other. But they're not drawn as parallel because this is giving us this sense of depth into the paper. And that's that's why, uh, yeah, there's there's different uh, ways of drawing these things to achieve different different things. OK, so we've looked at diagrams that you uh, might draw to to help create an object, to help uh, somebody who's building understand how to put the pieces together. Um, we've looked at ways of looking at the, the diagram to give it a little bit of perspective, but maintain all of those those parallel lines and whatnot. So you still get a sense of, of the relationships between the, the sides. Here, though, we're trying to make this look a little bit more realistic. Uh, what it would look like if this object was kind of just sitting on the street, okay, or like a building or, or something like that if you're outside. Anyway, I hope that kind of gives you a little bit of sense of how these these different types of diagrams uh, are drawn. Thank you.